Well, it's uh, Monday, the 22nd of July, about 5.15 in the evening. Got a few build-ups around, hearing a little thunder. Been down there on a 10-day vacation. The garden's getting a little greener. We had my wife's 42nd reunion held here at the River Cottage, and we fed 35 people. And we've been fooling around trying to go home. Finally got all my black plastic pinned down. I don't know what the problem is with these Israeli melons. Now those pretty healthy, especially one in the middle. Uh, there were four or five came up right there. I tend to think the rabbits maybe got them. The last one just died. The watermelons are flourishing and the butternut squash are flourishing. So I don't know what the deal is with these Israeli melons, but they, uh, they get plenty of sun here. These tomatoes are slowly getting bigger. The peppers, after I cultivated down the sides, you can see a little fresh dirt, black color down the sides of these, this, these rows. Allowed more moisture to get into the soil instead of it running off, it was so hard. It allows the roots to penetrate and they started picking up and growing and I did hit them with a half strength 10-10-10 miracle Grow. The squash are really, we're losing plants they're not really doing anything. They've had very few flowers. I think there's one or two squash set on them. I don't know what's going on with the squash. They haven't dried out. The okra's getting taller, that'll work. The beans are starting to climb up on the netting. Let me slide on this fig tree. Cucumbers are going along. I'll slide over here. That's what we're picking a day but there must be a thousand cucumbers set on them so we'll be up to our ears on them before long the tomatoes are doing okay now that the, everything settled down we got a little hot but there's a, you can look at these plants there's not a lot of tomatoes within the first three feet of the ground the Roma set a few some of these cherries set a few but the big tomatoes aren't doing it uh, there's my volunteer over there that came up in a compost pile that's doing pretty good this tomato here, see how I've rooted it over to the next pole? I just took a nylon long, long tired of the, the, the seat part of a pantyhose and tied it on top of the post, and directing it that way, and then I can direct the others over top of that one. And we are getting a lot of pollination now, and you're starting to see full sets of sprigs of tomatoes instead of partial sets. And that is a blessing. Uh, we're getting very few large tomatoes. But I'm going to come over here and step through. I'm pretty proud of that better boy and that better boy because better boys don't get that big. Now here's my hand, folks. That's a pretty good sized better boy. But they're starting to settle a little more in the middle. Uh, it's still been a tough season for them. But you can see with the coloration turning on them that. You know, that one's going to be ready in about four days, five days. Since they're turning white, that's when you're going to, uh, they'll start to turn color. And when they get really white, white, that's when you cut, uh, take them for fried green tomatoes. You don't really pick a green, green tomato. You pick one that's turned white and not green. Like this tomato here is a lot whiter than these greener ones. And that does the better. I got to pick some of these cherries today before we go home. And I do notice that I have some white flies on these uh, Rutgers. The last three plants here are Rutgers in each of these rows. I have never had white flies in my garden. These are not as bad as they were, but you can see that it has some white flies on it. And the odd thing the other day, there was a lot of them on it. And I was on this one looking at it, and I wish I'd had my camera, and I, it's cleared up a little bit now. But this had white flies on it, this had white flies on it, this one, which is looking a little peaked, had white flies on it. And they're all heritage seeds. They're the 1988 uh, Rutger seeds that I grew. This is a hybrid. There's no white flies. None. This is a hybrid. No white flies. This is a hybrid, no white flies. This is the one we talked about on the earlier video. Now that you're seeing all these tomatoes are starting to set. 
and we're getting better set at the top because we're getting bees in here. They're getting full clusters. Some of these are partial clusters and some had lost the flowers. But that's why I didn't, I got away from planting uh, some of the old tomatoes because they just seem to be prone to white flies and uh, I've not even had white flies in my greenhouse. And the beans are all slowly starting to come up. I dug in my compost pile just to see what it was looking like and it didn't look bad at all. But last year there was up to the wire if not above the wire. So you can see how much is, it's compacted down due to compost. But I got a few cherries out here to pick today. Now we're not going to be uh, low on tomatoes because we got 52 plants. But the thing about uh, I won't have as many to give away. And we're still catching a few Japanese beetles. But most of the beetle population is uh, backing off. It usually lasts three to five weeks depending on how bad the season is. And if it's a real horrible year, it can last all the summer. This muscadine is starting to, all this is new growth off of a cane that came off of the main uh, stem, the trunk. And see, these have all flushed out. So I'll get grapes off these next year and I'll get grapes off whatever comes on that cane. I got up here the other day, people asked me, uh, how do you know how much to cut back so you don't cut off good stuff? You would just take a pair of snips and cut it off there if it's dry. Now this is so dry you can tell it's broken. See, it's dead. But you just clip it off and clip it off and clip it off until you see green. And I don't care if you have to go all the way back to here. But if it's, now this is probably a little more alive. You can look at the texture of it. But see, this is a darker texture and it's drier. You know, it's, it's dead. But if, if you won't have any kind of vine, just cut that. If it's green, stop cutting. Now you can go to an end of a branch and cut it. If it's dry, go to where it's green and stop cutting. But if I, there's no point having a dead branch up here because if it's dead, it's never coming back. So you could just keep cutting. I don't care where. You can go out there and cut back to here. And eventually you'll see green and that's when you quit. Now the grapevines are uh, a little filigreed from the uh, beetles, but every day I come over here and shake them and see that none flew. So it's pretty much over. You'll get a few. Whoop, one flew out of there. Well, earlier in the year, a lot flew out of there. And that's getting to be a nice trunk. See, I've got a nice, ju nice junction here. That's going to work out really nice in the future. And this trunk, even though it's a thinner vine, it's still got a nice, nice trunk up here. But anyway, folks, we're going to have to go up the country. And it is getting a little greener. And this one little wire cage on the end with the plants around the bottom, I bet you I'll get a hundred kicks off of it. And they are setting, but they're not as thick and bushy at the top as they usually are this time of year. And my fig tree is loaded, but they're not getting any bigger. I'll walk down there and show you what I'm talking about. Now when your fig tree first starts flushing out in the springtime, you always get figs. And then you think you're just going to have a very few, but that's just flushing out on some of the wood left from last year. All your figs come on the growth of this year, and they're staying about the same size. They're really not growing. Now, there's a ton on here, and we've gotten a fair amount of rain, but uh, they're just not getting any bigger. Now, there were six or eight birds in here and two squirrels today, and those big early figs, they've already eaten those. And... Uh, Nothing we can do with this, it's too big to put netting on. And if you look at it from this angle, it's getting a little bit greener. And I think we might get a little rain. Right now I'm watering. Because I don't want to come back down here for two or three days to water. Well, appreciate y'all watching and listening to my channel. See you to another day.